Yeah, welcome y'all back to Bam Bam Raw TV. Uh, before we get started today on the episode in which I want to talk about what people have been asking me about how did I feel or what happened on my last day that I was free a free man on the street and the incident that went down in that. But uh, before we get to that, uh, I had an incident yesterday when I was doing the intro and I felt like it was maybe important before we get into that story. I mean, I felt, I felt moved to talk about it. And uh, yesterday while we was doing the intro that's gonna be put on this series, uh, we was down there video shooting down in the bottom, uh, down on Family Street, trying to do a little intro, just, you know, making it a little live, you know, kind of giving people an idea where if they look at the intro, they'll have an idea of some of the things that I'm gonna be bringing to the table. In the process of doing that, we was going from place to place, and uh, a couple of individuals, a couple of white guys, they seen us, and uh, they came over on a little, uh, look like a golf cart type thing, and they came over and they looked at us, and we thought they was, you know, concerned about us being around their property, or uh, being around their equipment, or uh, being around their, uh, you know, just be around in the area. So we thought they was gonna come to us and like, hey, you know, man, this y'all help gonna have to leave this area or blah or whatever. But anyway, the guys walked up and they say, uh, two guys come up and everything and met them. I won't be revealing no name, but uh they walked up and they said, uh, hello, how y'all doing? You know, what y'all doing some filming down here? We said, Well, we're doing a little little documentary and some material on local on the local personality and some local personalities around here and everything like that. So he said, Oh, all right. He said, Okay, so it's like a documentary, a movie or what? I said, Well it's basically right now it's it's, it's starting off on some local personalities and a series of events that went on in a local personality life. And he said, Oh, he said, Well, I guess that goes to show he said, I just uh he said I was just sitting there looking earlier when I was coming to work and I seen my workers, the rest of my workers and stuff, they was talking to a guy and the guy was in in a suit and he they was shaking his hand and they was talking to him and everything and black guy and I and I seen him and as I got closer I noticed the the black guy was uh I noticed he was fifty cents. And so he said so I went up to him, so I shook his hand, so he was a nice cordial dude and he said he was talking about uh uh he you know, where we hope, where we keep our property, because these are the individuals, these were two of the individuals that will be doing some of the work on the housing projects down there that they put down in the bottom after, you know, they finally start building down in the hot bottom. So uh, he was saying that, uh, hey, he was telling the dude that, hey, man, they, this is where we store our equipment in this old movie studio and everything. And he don't, he said it seemed like he was showing interest in, in that and some other things and so he was just looking at maybe he had been thinking about using Shreveport as a venue for some of his uh future projects and everything. So and then he said, Well, okay, well it was it was good to meet him. So he was a real, real polite dude and everything. He shook hands with everybody. And so he said, Well, now I see another personality right now, so I get a chance to uh, talk to you and shake hands with you. He said, Because I've been working on this project and he said, I kinda he said, I I kind of take this project to heart because the project in which I'm I'm just a man working on building these houses and everything. He said, but uh, I I feel some kind of way about the way that all these uh, people got displaced when they uh, lost they lost their houses and lost stuff and got displaced when they come down here and they locked up the bottom boys. He said when they come down here and they locked up all those bottom boys, locked them up, throw them away and they ain't gonna never see the daylight, then they come back down here and they destroyed every you know, they took away everything down here. The folks don't have nowhere nowhere to live. So he said, uh, now I'm glad to be a part of building some houses and stuff where people can live in this community again and they can they have some of these people have have somewhere to come back to and have somewhere to stay. So he showed me different houses, what they had set for this, what was gonna be built here one for senior or elder people and what was gonna be built here and whatever we went and we started going back and forth and everything like that. I see yeah, well you know it was a lot lot of story. I see it was a big bigger story behind 
Bobby Boy is being locked up. He said, oh, yeah. He said, I, I, he said, I heard that from, I'm going to say, he said, I heard that from T. He said, uh, T, he said, T, uh, he said, T down here, lucky looker. When I, he said, when I come down here, he said, uh, I had, I had the wrong impression of the individuals and everything. And, uh, T used to always talk so highly about them. And, uh, T was, uh, he said, T, our equipment was the people, the drug addicts and people was coming here, stealing the batteries out of our equipment and everything like that. And, uh, we had concerns about it cause we was actually losing, we losing and we kept having to replace property and everything. And we was like, Hey, we gonna call the police or we gonna have to put a gun down here, put somebody down here, do something, you know, we, you know, do something. And, uh, T told him, T told me, say, uh, listen, don't, don't worry about it. We, let me, let me, let me deal with it. We gonna, I'm gonna deal with it like the bottom boy. So he said when, when based on what he had heard about the bottom boys, uh, he said, he told T, uh, he said, no, nah, no, nah, man, no, nah, we don't, we don't want that kind of foolishness. He said, no, nah, man, he said, uh, he said, T told him, he said, no, nah, man, he said, one thing, he said, the thing about the bottom boy that people knew him for, they was, they was straight shooters. He said, all you gotta do, don't talk down to people, talk straight to them, make them aware of the consequences, let them know, hey, we can't have you down here still in our property. We can't have you down here doing this here. We understand you got a dope have you got whatever you got you need, but you need you can't we can't allow you to do it because we're losing too much and it's causing us too much and we're gonna either have to have have you start getting locked up for it or whatever. Now we're giving you a chance to avoid that by staying out from down here. So you can avoid the consequences. Do not come down here and mess this property no more. We're gonna give you warning because we do not want this to happen to you. And he said, you he said uh, uh, according to what he knew about the way, the way T knew about the way the bottom boy did with folks was that you don't talk down to them, you talk straight to them, and you tell them the consequences of their action and prayer and hope that they're going to avoid them. And he said, he said, he said, T, talk to the people and going on and got the message out. He said, man, nobody messed with their equipment from that point on. They never had a concern after that. And he said that that made him inquisitive about the bottom boy. So he said he started asking T stuff. He said he started asking T. He never asked T about whether they was out or not at that time, but he said he asked T, I mean, well, what what were these, these dudes about? What were these, these hooligans or whatever these dudes were about? And he said, well, man, them dudes were something different. They were more than that, man. They was, they was not so so far a gang. These dudes was just people who came up in this neighborhood and they stuck together and they stayed in their neighborhood. And they did a lot of they did a lot of negative things, but they had a, a, a positive mindset behind some of the things, you know, like to say that and uh he said the man the man said he had he had got a different a different ideology, you know, he got a different thought pattern on because compared to what he had heard about those individuals, it changed his whole mindset about these dudes he said man it, it took it he said he seen these dudes in a whole different light and for a guy that he was starting to respect in t and a dude that was played great with him they and going on he said had been fair with him had actually showed him the benefits that what they what the bottom boys that he had learned from them or what he had heard from them had, would actually work and he said he actually like okay man probably if those guys was but still here now, it would it would a lot of this stuff would probably would have taken a different turn. And I mean, this this is his conversations. Two white guys, one of them didn't say much with long beard, red hair, long beard. One, of them, yeah, ain't going to go into that. One of them didn't say much, but the other one, we, we so we sitting here and talking and everything. So he said, yeah, you know. I said, well, well, the other part I can correct about one part. Of, I said, I can correct one part of your statement that I can tell you is false. So he said, uh, which part that is? So I, I, I'm, a, I'm assuming the way that I put it on him, that he was he was expecting me to say that the bottom boys did good stuff or they fair or they stuff like that. He, I think he was looking for me to say, no, nah, them scam bullies were nothing but 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 hooligans and, and thugs and all that there. So when I, I can tell you a part that is, that, that, in your statement that is false. And then that's when he like, he, his ears perked up. He like, what's that? I said, that part you said about them not never seeing daylight. He said, yeah, yeah, cause they got, I said, man, 
I said, they all done seen daylight. Most of them all got jobs. And I said, I'm the last one that come out. He said, he said you one of them? I said, yeah, I'm Bam Bam. I was the one did the most time, got the most time. And I've been out for a year and a half now. I said, I've been trying to do stuff for the community. I've been trying to make some aware and them stuff like that. Dude shook my hand, so I get to shake two personality hand today, man. He said, uh, hey, man, it's glad to meet you. It's been an honor to meet you. He said, man, I, he said, I enjoyed talking to you, man. He said, I, I would have never knew I was talking to a body boy just by your conversation. He said, man, go on, finish doing what y'all doing, man. We sorry for interrupting y'all, man, anything. He said, anything I can do to help you personally. And from my point, he said, anything I can do to help you, let me know, man. You keep on. So he asked me my information and where I was on the web and where I was on the internet and everything. He said, man, man, can I look you up going on? So uh, the guy with me that was doing the film gave him all my information because, as I tell you, I'm not, I'm not computer literate. Now, I'm still having a lot of trouble with these computers and everything. So just answering the phone call can be a little tough sometimes. But anyway, that conversation now, it, it kind of like, you know, I mean, it was, it tripped me out. And then the fact that it, 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 it kind of coincided like that shortly after, as we was walking off, that's when another guy came through and uh, he passed through. And he just, hey, man, 50 cents right down there. Uh, he's down there at, I think, the Parks Place or somewhere. He right down there, man. He's down there shaking hands and everything like that going on like that. I was laughing and uh, I was just laughing about it. I said, okay, I mean, yeah, we just, we already heard he down there and everything like that. Man, you going down there? No, I ain't going down there. He, he should be coming down here shaking my hand. So we just, we laughed about it and went on. But I felt like I, before I get into uh, this other story, you know, I just wanted to tell about that yesterday that happened. And I was very impressed by the fact that uh, a person relayed the truth about us to these individuals. And this individual have a different mindset for us. Like I said again, I'm never saying that we was angels going on. We may not have been there, but it was some moral aptitude into our things that we done. And maybe through the grace of God, that's the reason that we did get a chance for all of us to be coming back out here and we did not get the extreme sentences that and get the extreme sentences peak that I'm not saying against other, but I mean just we didn't get that those extreme sentences and everything because, you know, for the, for if not for the grace of God, we wouldn't be back out here. And so, I mean, we want to be mindful of the things we've done. We always want some grace over us, man. And so, you know, be considerate of the things that we do. Make sure we, we have some mercy for people. Make sure we have give grace so that we can receive grace. But uh, again, I'm going to tell you the stories, how they is. I'm going to keep them raw. But I'm always keep you in tune to the spiritual aspect of things and what I think is an antidote concerning them situation. Okay, now... As we go to get into the story about why, what I was doing on the day before I got incarcerated on my last day out on the streets.